Hello everybody, this is Kyrex with another episode of This Week in Kyrex. This is Wednesday, October 21st, 2020. See, I could do days. And, uh, here we are. The only super mega ultra big happy fun time update is the trip to SeaWorld, which was pretty big, actually. I mean, I've been before, but this... This is probably the most we've ever done at SeaWorld with the least amount of time. Uh, for starters, because my friend from Lee couldn't go, there was no reason for me not to use my dolphin coupon. So I booked in for that, and while I was setting that up, um, Reaper's wife and her son were lining up for a penguin encounter, and I'm like, hey, could you loan me the money for this? And I paid him back this morning, actually. Or yesterday night. And, um... I'm like, okay, fine, we'll get you on the penguin encounter. So, right then and there. Hold on. I'm here. You're fine, Betsy. So, right then and there, right off the bat, we're looking at, uh... For me, a dolphin and a penguin. So we're wandering through the park, waiting for stuff to open, because the downside about going to SeaWorld on time, or when it opens, is half the park is closed. Like, the part with most of the rides, and the sharks, and Infinity Falls, and all that other fun shit. And only one of the restaurants is really open. Also, I broke from tradition and got myself one of the little cups. They have these little cups that you can, uh, the day you buy them, you get infinite refills, and after that, you can, like, buy a coupon or something for refills. And I got one, along with my, uh, all-day dining pass, which I spent, uh, I added into my 10 SeaWorld dollars. Now let's figure out, oh, that explains it. First things first, here's my stick. Second thing, yeah, you're hurt. Um, it's really not a hell of a lot I can do about that right now. So anyway, we're going through the park, we go to the Manta area. Where there is a... Um, Oh, I'm sitting here. Why don't I have my obsidian? I know exactly why I don't have my obsidian. I am an idiot. But that's gonna help a lot. So anyway, um, we're in the Manta area, and there are lots of aquariums. Now, Manta being one of the roller coasters, it does have its own aquarium, which is kind of cool. And I'm not a roller coaster guy, but I am there to see the fish, so that's fun. That's gotta hurt for any help. <laughs> so anyway, we get there early enough that they're actually feeding the animals. So we look up, because there's a, a tank above you. I'm going to pause while I tell this part. And we're looking at the tank above us, and we see this little, uh, this, I, I think it's a saw shark, but it could be another species of flat shark. And he's just swimming around with a little fish in his mouth, and then they break out this, what looks like a baby bottle for animals. And they're just squirting, you know, the plankton and stuff in there, and the rays are just going after this thing like crazy. 
and that's fun. Then we had um, kind of wandered the park a little bit. Didn't really do much. Nothing was really open until about 11 or so. Ooh, ooh, stingrays, stingrays. Um, we fed, well, I, we didn't. I fed the stingrays, because that's what I do. I do not go to SeaWorld without giving fish to stingrays. It's just the best part. And the cow nose rays were really cuddly today. They were just, you know, letting you pet them. If they didn't want to be touched, they'd kind of lift their fins out of the way. <clears throat> but here's the big one. Literally. As I went back to uh, the others, I happened to look in the pool at the uh, the front because it's it's a big ass pool. This thing's like a football field size pool, and it's not very wide. It's maybe if people were to lay down across it, you get maybe three adult humans across in most places because it's narrower in some spots. And at the very, very far end, the big ray was out. Because uh, they have this huge stingray, I think it's a bull ray, and he is, he's bigger than I am. He's fucking huge. And usually he just kind of sits in the middle where no one can fuck with him. Well, this time he was in petting range, so well, how many chances like this am I going to get? I reached in to pet him, and he kind of leaned towards my hand. Petted the other side of him, he leaned that way, and then he just kind of fucked off. But it was, it was pretty cool. Um, I think he was trying to get me to pet near his eyes, but I didn't know if I was allowed to do that, and I didn't want to risk pissing it off, because even without a stinger, this thing's tail is longer than my arm, and if it whips me, it's going to hurt. So we get to the dolphins. I get to the dolphins. They send me off on my own. Uh, the plan being that I'll go do the dolphins, I'll eat, and then I'll catch up with them, which is what I ended up doing. So, I turns out I actually get the dolphin I had last time. His name is Hurley. And I only know that because she introduced one of the dolphins as Alpha, which was the dolphin we didn't get, and Hurley. We also had a third dolphin named Iggy, and I interacted with him a little bit. Uh, Hurley was much better behaved this time. He stayed up the whole time, didn't try to fuck off and do his own thing. Let me pet him, pose. It was very cute. Um... Uh, the trainer did throw in a new part of the routine that's something that she does that the others don't. That was pretty damn memorable. Uh, had you hold your hand out and the dolphin put its nose against your hand. Just a little dolphin boop. And this is the part that kind of had me nervous because, and I realized why, this is the only time the dolphin initiated contact. And I know enough about dolphins to know that if Iggy was of the mind to do so, he could shatter my hand with that nose of his. But no, it was just a gentle touch, plus there's the fact that his teeth are in that part. That's one of the parts they tell you not to fuck with. So, it went off without a hitch, it was great, got some great pictures. Didn't get my dolphin boot picture, the other people did, but not me, I was the first in line, and I don't think the cameraman knew they were doing it, so. I missed out. But, uh... I'm trying to meet up with the others, and I'm hungry, and I'm thinking, well, what's nearby? And I happen to see Antarctica, and I'm like, you know, Antarctica has a place, the Expedition Cafe. Fuck it, I'll eat there, because I don't know what they serve there, but it is a fact that all the parks, or at least Aquatica, Adventure Island, and SeaWorld, I haven't been to Bush Gardens since the past existed, all the parks, or all the, all the restaurants in the park that take the all-day dining band serve chicken strips and french fries so even a picky eater like me doesn't care where i eat because i can eat literally anywhere that we have the pass at. so i figure worst case scenario i'll eat at expedition cafe get chicken strips and fries and eat something better later like a cheeseburger or something So I get to Expedition Cafe, and I see, okay, we've got Asian food in the middle one, we got pizza on this left one, and in the right one we got chicken strips and fries. I'm like, fuck it, I'm not in a pizza mood, let's go to the chicken strips and fries. Expedition Cafe is now my favorite restaurant in the entire place, and here's why. I get up there, and I'm looking at their menu, and I see something called the Tender Tower. The Tender Tower is 
chicken strips with waffle fries covered in cheese, bacon bits, and chives. Now, mine didn't have the chives, which I was fine with. As a side, you could get waffle fries covered in cheese and bacon bits with green onion, which I did not get. So my dinner, or my first meal of the day, was chicken strips and waffle fries covered in cheese and bacon bits with a side of waffle fries covered in cheese and bacon bits. I did not need to eat until right before I went to bed after that. And I was actually carrying around half a chicken strip for the next hour waiting for my stomach to empty enough to fit that thing. So yeah, Expedition Cafe will fill you the fuck up. I mean, you, you will not want food for the rest of the day. I could have eaten the rest of the day, but I didn't need to. And it actually paid off because uh, I ended up not using my all-day pass for food anymore. That was the last meal I had. I, I got drinks, but I got that with my cup. So Expedition Cafe is out of the way. I'm fat and happy. I petted a dolphin. I fed stingrays. I'm doing good. We get over. I get over to them. We're kind of wandering the park some more. We don't do any rides. We stop and look at the seals and sea lions a bit. We um, look at the gators. We look at the turtles. Although I think we did that earlier. The manatees, all that fun shit. Uh, we go to the walruses, check them out, look at the belugas. That specifically happened after Expedition Cafe because I'm wandering this exhibit with a chicken strip. <laughs> <clears throat> and we saw the funniest damn thing. Now, this is in October, so we've got kids in Halloween costumes. We stop at one of the restrooms, and there's this kid in one of those big T-Rex costumes. And he's sitting on the floor, slumped, and he's just this deflated dinosaur. And that, by itself, is absolutely comical. And his little sister keeps trying to hug him, and that, he's like, no, stop, I'm trying to rest. That's not the funny thing. The funny thing is when they leave, he has to get up. So here's this floppy little dinosaur getting to his feet, looking like Godzilla after a fucking bender. <laughs> and he's waddling off, and I mean waddling. Like, if you asked a kid to do an exaggerated waddle, it would look like this kid's walk. And I'm not making fun of the kid himself. It was the costume doing this. It was exaggerating all his movements, but it was hilarious. And even that wasn't the funny bit. The funny bit was the look on my friend's wife's son's face as he watched this kid walk away. Just this, well, that's a part of my life I'm not getting back. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Um, we ended up rounding out the day by doing our penguins. <clears throat> it turns out they were not the Antarctic breeds. And when I say Antarctic, they do not have emperor penguins there. They need to keep it far too cold for them. Basically, it would cost so much money to get it that cold, and people would not be able to go in there with them without protective equipment. So, emperor penguins are a little bit outside of their range, and that's fine. Because the other two penguins they got in there are nice. What we saw was something called Magellanic penguins. They're South African breed. They have little, uh, little black birds with little white stripes. They're very cute. And, as it turns out, extremely affectionate. So these are these were specifically ambassador penguins. Like these penguins go on trips to meet people, educate people about penguins, stuff like that. And what we did was we had a group of ten originally, but we ended up having a group of eight go because two people basically dropped out because they thought they were getting the Antarctic penguins. Me, I want to touch cold bird. That's that's as far as I thought. I don't care what kind of cold bird. Just let me touch a cold bird. <laughs> you know. So we, we get in there, and these penguins are cuties. They pick one up. His name was Ziggy. And the whole time, he's just kind of snuggling into the trainer. And not, not in a way like, oh, my God, I'm scared. Just kind of, oh, this is my trainer. I like this trainer kind of a way. It was an affectionate snuggle, not a fear snuggle. I know enough about animals to know that much. So don't worry. He wasn't freaking out. Uh, the rule was we have to approach him from behind, we take two fingers, we pet. And 
for those wondering, they feel like cats. They, they, their feathers feel like cat fur. Cold cat fur. Very soft. Very nice to pet. Very, very touchable animals. Not that you should go out and touch them. Go to SeaWorld, pay for the thing, then you can touch a penguin. But they are very pleasant to the touch. And it was quite an experience. And speaking of quite an experience... A little girl almost caught the experience of a lifetime. I was, uh, we, we went on down the line from left to right. Our group was second from the last. And I was the first in our group to touch it. Then, then my friend's wife, then her son, then this little girl and her mother. And this, the mother put the little girl up on a stool. She's petting it. Then the mother pets it. Mother grabs a little girl off the stool, moves her. Not three seconds later, this penguin projectile cannon shits right where the girl's face had been. If the mother had been three seconds slower, this penguin would have ruined this girl's childhood. Turns out, penguins projectile poopers. He got a good three feet off of that thing. <laughs> He just bent over, wiggled his ass, and boom! Like a fucking cannon. Not with a noise, though. It just... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that was just special. That was absolutely special. But, yeah, it was it was a lot of, a lot of fun. <clears throat> we ended up ending our trip to SeaWorld around 3 or 4 p.m., which is notable because they were due to close at 9. Um, the the driver, my friend's wife, her shoulder was hurting her. I was getting fed up with the mask because it was starting to get harder to breathe because I was hot and sweaty. Um, we'd done so much stuff, there really wasn't anything else to do except maybe go on Infinity Falls a couple times. Maybe catch the Orca show, but that was like three hours away. So we basically decided, look, we've done all we want to do. Normally when my friend is there, she'll go on roller coasters. So we'll walk around, wait on her, eat a little more, but I'm full. So we just went home early. And we had a satisfying time in the four or five hours we were there. It's a good day. Real good day at SeaWorld. Okay, back to game. So let's get us some jackal meat. Yay, jackal meat. Do any of my monkeys have sticks? I think a lot of them do. Oh, I'm gonna eat me some jack. Good night, Winks. Come here, Winkles. So, I had some scheduling issues uh, the past couple days. I happened to look ahead at my schedule at SeaWorld, no less. So, I'm wandering around SeaWorld, bitching about this. And I see that next pay cycle, which is a two week block, I'm looking at about 57 workouts. As you can well imagine, that's not exactly conducive to a good paycheck. When I normally pull, you know, eight. And I'm looking at it and I've got like several six and a half, seven and a half hour days. I've got a four hour day. And they've got me on several Cap 2 shifts when I'm not actively working Cap 2. So... My plan was basically just, look, I'm not doing this Cap 2 shift for four hours. Uh, if they don't fix it and that comes up, I'm just going to use PTO and skip that day. So yesterday, I go into work, uh, the, the personnel manager's there, so I talk to her, she gets it all straightened out. I'm at like 62 hours or so. So that's closer to the 64 minimum that I like to pull, so I'll be fine now. Uh, the original plan tomorrow was going to be to get my PlayStation VR, but I didn't pull in as much as I thought I was going to on the, the early check, and... Where's my stick? Oh, I need to make a new one. That's where it is. You know what, 
you are gonna give me your stick and you're gonna take this basalt. Oh. Alright, anyway, um, I got it all sorted out. Uh, I'll be fine. As for the, uh, the PlayStation VR, I'm gonna have to wait till next Thursday, no biggie. What is kind of a biggie is that my friend and I, later today, hopefully, things can still change, we'll be playing Star Trek uh, Bridge Crew together. Ah, we're back here. Okay. the bleeding issue. Oops, sorry, Betsy. Let's grab my stuff. Winky, sweetie, your head's big. Please move. Thank you. Alright, so we're out of the canyon, at least. I think we're out of the canyon in the wrong direction, too. Well, that's okay. Alright, we just ate one of you guys, so you're gonna wanna fuck right the hell off. And that's why you're gonna wanna fuck right the hell off. We're not fucking around here. Couple of you monkeys have rocks. This might be enough basalt for us all to have a good shit. Now, the thing with the basalt is they make sticks or they make spears faster, and they're better knives. So. If we uh, get caught without a weapon and we have our basalt, we're still relatively safe. As opposed to with just the obsidian slices. Which, don't get me wrong, those are effective too, but they're better at cutting. Alright, every month we get one. I'll just keep drinking so they'll keep drinking. See, so yeah, bridge crew is going to be fun. Uh, my friend should be playing squadrons with me soon, which will also be fun. There's just a lot of good shit. We're going to tend to sleep through the hottest part. I 
See you, motherfucker. And I was ready for it. Fuck off. Oh shit. He's coming back for more. Oh, there he is. Okay, not quite coming back for more like I thought. Still, probably shouldn't leave him to his own devices. I think it'll be okay. Let's drink some water. We all got thirsty during the day. No, you keep a firm look at that motherfucker. If he's coming back, I want to know it. He's coming back. Yeah, I'm just gonna go get him. All I have to do is follow the river and I'll get right back to where I am. He's a little too dangerous for me to leave running around. And he's hurt, so that's that's a plus for us. And he's made of food. Which is another plus for us. <laughs> Alright, that thing died instead. That saber cat honestly seems pretty content to just fuck right off. That's what they okay. yeah, Looks like we've been here before. Anyway, let's get back to where we were. Our little settlement, as it were. Let's get some choppers. Bring some stuff. I'm gonna wonder why the fuck you're doing what you're doing. Are you just not in follow mode? Everyone could drink some water. I've been playing a lot of XCOM lately, which is fun. XCOM 2 specifically. Uh, got all the DLCs finally. Uh, finally killed the last of the Chosen. I say the last, like I already almost finished. I had one Chosen dead. I took out the other two. Which was just embarrassingly easy, I'm not gonna lie. The, uh... They're basically, I think it's like... It's like the assassin, the hunter, and so on. It's like the assassin, the hunter, and the warlock. Great, now I need to find more aloe leaves. Wonderful. Ooh, granite, that's perfect. That's exactly what I need. And the branch is there, we go. Perfect. This is a not half bad settlement, if not for the predators. Alright, who's bleeding? I think it's you. It's you. I need this. No. 
Yeah, time to make some salt choppers. Those are my preferred tool of choice. The problem is, it's so much rarer than the other two types of stone. At least in the areas I frequent. But say, why are any of you making thirsty sounds? No one should be making thirsty sounds. with my monkeys? Those are my monkeys, sir. The fuck do you think you are? You fuck with my monkeys. I know who I think you are. I think you're a dead goddamn snake. And look at that. Now we've got dinner. And now I need more owls. Who is it? It's me. This thing is a pretty big bitch, though. It gets quite a bit of nutrition. Uh, I also have several new games. I have uh, Dawn of Man, I have Planet Fall, and I have Frostbite, which I got Market Player. I also have a game called Don't Bite Me. <laughs> Which I haven't tested yet, but it was free, and it, it looks silly, so I fucked with it. I downloaded it. Okay. Been playing a lot of Star Trek Online. I do that sometimes where I'll just go through phases where I play it constantly, and other ones where I do my dailies, and other ones where I don't do anything at all. Part of me's thinking I might want to watch some more She-Ra, just because I'm just getting in that mood where I want to watch that last season. But yeah, as I think I was trying to say, the Basalt Chopper is better at everything except chopping food. I think the Obsidian Slicer is a little bit faster. But if you've got a tool you want to carry around, it's this one. I actually want to check, check something more quickly. While I've got it, I may as well. So 
How good is Caesar? It's pretty damn good. We're going to add this to the pile of useful things that I'm preparing. Do this correctly this time, please. There we go. So, yeah, having the aloe isn't the same thing as having mud, but it'll do because I've got water for the heat, and I don't much care for camouflage right now. What should I do for my tribe? This game would be so fun as even just two players, you know what I mean? Just give me, like, two-player ancestors. Just one of us goes out and gathers things, the other one, you know, makes shit. Or just having everyone have the presence of mind to keep their own chopper and their own sticks, etc. There we go, that's that's more like it. I say there weren't nearly enough monkeys moving over here. Right. Okay, monkey. Monkey C Monkey do. thing. More food. Can I just do some kind of rolling fucking wrestling ass move? like several monkeys didn't put theirs away in the excitement. Well, 
let's butcher some corpses. I have noticed that in games like these, meat never seems to go bad. No idea why, but it doesn't. Strip the corpse. Anything else there? No. But eat your jackal. Everybody eat your jackal. Already tripping balls after the first fight. Eat your pack, mate. What now, bitch? Give me that. Anyway. What was I doing? I was doing this. Give me all that, mate. All of it. I know there's more meat on this bitch. Is there just that? Well, shit. I sworn this thing had more meat in it. Yes, I was wrong. I still can't believe that rolling body slammed so into the jackal before I stabbed it. That was pretty impressive. I do wonder how the babies grow or live long enough to grow up when we never feed them. That's granite. That doesn't help. Is that granite or is that a grind. That's my grind. That's why I couldn't get any anything more. Did you get what the fuck are you got? Sallow here. He's hurt. It's you, isn't it? Is it you? No. One of you fuckers is hurt. It's you. 
Damn aloe. Where's my chopper? It's right there under your goddamn feet. I've explained so much about what just just went wrong. I'm like, I know these things have like two or three harvests in them. Not when you pick up a grinder, they don't. You monkeys, put them in a pile. I'm gonna chop some snake. So we all have enough. All things considered, this isn't the worst lair we've had. But yeah, this this game would go a lot of fun with extra people. One of the problems with me, I guess, is that I tend to be... Oddly enough, I'm not the explorer guy. I'm the domestic person. I want to stay and build and craft. That's what I like to do. One of the reasons I I drift to games like Minecraft and Seven Days to Die and Raft and a couple other things. If Raft ever hits PS4, I'm buying that shit. That's why I have Subnautica. Guy, could you imagine that cross-platform Raft? Yes, please. Kinda wants to do a game where I just kinda like the documentary style where I just play a single like mid-tier monkey by myself and just wander the world. I do find it interesting that supplies never decay. Like for example, if I left a stack of sticks back at the original settlement and like a sack, a stack of horse tails and all that shit. If I left that in a pile there, which I know I've made them before, if I somehow navigate my way back, and I say somehow because I have no idea where it is from here, but if I were to somehow navigate my way back there, all that stuff would still be there and it would still be viable. Like the sticks wouldn't have petrified or disintegrated, the meat would still be fresh, etc. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these aloes. And then we're gonna drink and then we're gonna sleep. And then in the morning we'll eat, we'll apply aloe, and we'll get the fuck out of here. I do wonder where the idea that nature is good for you came from. Like, oh, it's all natural. Nothing in nature is bad. Arsenic, cyanide, rattlesnake venom. 
you know. There's lots of shit. Mercury appears in nature. You shouldn't fucking eat it. Man, that alibi lasts a long goddamn time. I do wish we were a little deeper into the canyon, but this canyon's a good spot because trouble can only come from two directions. I preferred the mountain oasis we started in, the hidden oasis, because trouble couldn't come at all, but if it tried, there's really only one way it could come. I think that's one of maybe three places in the entire game we were safe from saber cats. Your friend will eat you too. I've noticed though, there's like no food in this area aside from me. Alright, everybody, come get some snack. Oh, never mind. Meat goes bad. Don't care, though. Either that or I ate the wrong part of the fucking snake. No, nope, we're all tremendously ill. That's okay. We'll live. We'll just drink a lot more water. Water solves everything. Especially the case of snake boots. Alright, y'all eat. I'm gonna drink the sick away. Drink the sick away. <laughs> Where are you? Now you're dead too. Now how you feel, motherfucker? Hi, I'm a pack animal. I'm gonna, by myself, take on this tribe of killer monkeys that have already eaten one of my pack members. By the way, I'm alone. Well, for you. I'll tell you one thing, it ended. All right. Gotta heal a couple monkeys. Gotta heal my monkeys. Injured monkey. <laughs> Wish they were smart enough to do this themselves. So that's a thing I wish that the AI would allow them to do, like, get to the point where they realize, oh, I'm injured, I should, uh, I should take steps to preserve my life, you know? Just have your monkeys, like, oh no, I've been cut, and then you watch them completely of their own volition. Get up, find a horse tail, strip it, and rub it in their wounds, you know? Or pick up a granite rock. Smack it, make a grinder, and then go from there, kind of a thing, you know?
Snake decayed pretty quickly, didn't he? Makes a big ass monkey nest. That's a fucking nest right there. As this monkey just fucking comes back empty handed. Just snap in the info menu. And we're done. And I'll see you next time, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>